I wanted to make a quick video on some road safety for runners uh, so you have this as a resource to reference and just as a good way for me to communicate it consistently uh, because I can email this out to you or to in the future any new runners that arise. So I have a few scenarios that I'll go over that are pretty common to our situation in Saginaw Township and uh, we'll go from there. Obviously I won't be able to cover every scenario that you may encounter but I'll try to hit some of the key situations that we may face while we're out on the road. Before I start with these scenarios in general some tips that I think we should take seriously is that uh, you should try to run with uh, at least one good training partner for you every day. Uh, not only is this better uh, mentally and, and from a motivation standpoint, hopefully, it helps the time pass quicker and things like that, of course. But also, uh, there's a lot of different things out there that we have to be aware of with other people in the community and and just having a partner to have a second set of eyes in general when you're watching for traffic or from other situations that may pop up around you adds to the safety by putting another layer in place uh, between you and some potential risk. It's also a good idea if you have a, a pocket that can accommodate for your phone uh, to have that with you in case you need to call for help or uh, if you need to get in touch with someone because uh, there's a situation that popped up while you were out on the run. The first scenario is just a, a general road crossing. Um, anytime you're crossing the road, you should do that at an intersection while we're in town, um, not in the middle of an intersection or where there isn't a crosswalk for you to use. Always use a crosswalk and make sure that you only go when the light indicates it's safe to walk across the road. Now make sure that you are paying attention to traffic still because uh, you need to watch for cars that may miss the red light or or different situations like that which I'll cover in uh, one of the next scenarios coming up but basically uh, wait at the corner until the walk signal is illuminated for you pretty simple never cross without the crosswalk never cross in the middle of a road in certain roads we should never cross such as Midland Road M47 probably should never cross Bay Road. Uh, even crossing Titabawasi to continue on the rail trail is pretty risky, so make sure you're being extra safe at, at any intersection, but especially avoid these bigger intersections with uh, the major roads in the community. In scenario two will cover when you're trying to cross the road safely, but a situation that I've personally had happen to me before a couple of times, once when I was running with a past athlete that I coached, where I actually pulled this person uh, out of the way of potential oncoming traffic. You can see the orange car here is turning right and you're crossing uh, that little guy icon is you crossing the road and the light said it's safe for you to cross but that orange car is uh, turning right and not paying attention to whoever's crossing the road. And this happens quite a bit where uh, even if, let's say you weren't waiting for the light to change to indicate that it's safe for you to walk and you broke rule number one from the first scenario of crossing only when the light indicates it's safe to. Um, so maybe uh, this orange car has the right of way technically and you're crossing the road and he's going to turn right and he's looking left at that white car to make sure that white car is not going through the intersection and watching the other traffic and he might miss you pretty easily stepping off the curb so make sure that you're paying attention uh, for cars turning or looking for other cars that may be crossing as you intend to cross even if you do have the crosswalk sign lit up for it for your turn to cross you have to pay attention to these cars wanting to turn from different places scenario three is uh, when you're on the sidewalk and you're running uh, and you can see in this picture the arrow pointing towards the little person icon uh, so you're heading from top to bottom on the image and you see that orange car on that different looking symbol it doesn't quite look like a road i think it's supposed to be a, a crosswalk or a road according to the place i made these images but i'm going to use that to indicate a driveway so it doesn't matter if the car's backing out or driving towards the road to turn out of the driveway. And it could be one of those roads where there's a stop sign actually where um, they're supposed to stop, 
look left for the traffic to come and then go out into traffic when it's safe for them apparently to do so. But what happens a lot when people, when they come out of these subdivision roads that don't have a stoplight that you're crossing or when they're coming out of a driveway is you're coming from the direction I have indicated in this picture. They're turning right. They don't ever look right. They are moving towards the road. Maybe they stop, maybe they don't. They're looking left for traffic to come and they never look right. And then they turn right to go into traffic. And maybe you're uh, at the exact same time entering their driveway. So you have to watch for cars that aren't paying attention to you coming from the direction they're trying to turn because typically what are they going to do they're going to look the opposite direction they're going to turn because that's where their traffic is coming from and they forget that you should look both ways now i'm not your driver's training instructor but i think what i learned when i was taught to drive applies to you as a runner on the sidewalk and certainly if you can learn one thing about driving for me uh you know through these processes that and these discussions that we have over time is when i was taught to look you look left, you look right, and then you look left again. At least that many times you check your directions to make sure it's safe to go. And if you have to check more because you're letting traffic pass, you do that. But that's a mistake I see a lot of drivers make. Uh, it's pretty common. You're coming up to a road or, or a driveway like that that doesn't have um, directions for you to stop as a runner where it's not necessarily a busy one, but it's important that you... Um, pay attention as a runner and slow down if you see a car is there and, and really watch to see if they're moving. In fact, another tip I, I'd suggest is sometimes it's hard to see the car itself start to move and you're trying to focus on such a big object. I recommend looking at the, the front wheel to see if they are indeed turned to the turning to the right. And I don't know if that helps much in some cases, but it, it is a thing. And also uh, you're more likely, in my opinion, to see the wheel moving before you uh, see the whole car and focusing on a point on the car might keep your attention better and pick up quicker that it's moving uh, and then maybe you can respond by stopping quicker and avoid that issue. Because we run primarily in the in the city I guess um, where we should hopefully have sidewalks for most of our routes uh, I suggest you stick to the sidewalks or all of the amazing bike paths that we have in the area now. We have so many bike paths and I've enjoyed exploring those the last few months myself and it's much safer out there because the only traffic you should have are bikers and runners or walkers so that's the safest option to be on the bike path for as much as you run of your run as you can when you can but I know that gets boring running the same route all the time so maybe you want to go on some routes around the community first I suggest you stay on sidewalks whenever you can and try to avoid routes where there isn't a sidewalk but even if you imagine you're going down McCarty Road and you get close to Hemeter and you want to turn and go down Hemeter, um, you can cross the road almost right away to get a sidewalk. But there are short stretches where there isn't a sidewalk um, and, and we're tempted to run on the incorrect side of the road in that case of the example I gave you uh, and um, not on a sidewalk and that puts you at risk. So. Uh, first tip is you need to be facing traffic if you find a, sp a spot where there isn't a sidewalk. Um, so that would mean run on the left side of the road because the cars are on the right side of the road traveling the opposite direction you are. And make sure that when cars are coming that you're as far off the road as you can get to the shoulder. Now in some cases there isn't much of a shoulder and again try to avoid those areas. But if you find somehow you, you, you popped into a spot where it's not quite uh, perfect for you to stay off the road, make sure you're facing traffic and when a car comes move as far as you can. Now you can see in this diagram that uh, I have a guy being courteous uh, and maybe you're worried that big truck is going to smash him because he's crossing the center line and give you space. Hopefully people uh, will do that and move over and give you space, but make sure that you're off the road and facing traffic when you run when there is no sidewalk or other option. But again, last uh, time I'll, I'll mention it and, and kind of your last um, option is if you find a a section of road where there isn't a sidewalk you, you have to know what to do so make sure that you are facing traffic and get off the road as far as you can when cars come. I think those scenarios and some of those tips cover most of the key situations and safety aspects that we need to follow uh, with one more exception and then we'll wrap up. You also shouldn't have two earbuds and if you're running with music 
I know a lot of us like to run with music. I, I've been running with music quite a bit, but what I do is I only have one of them in so that I can have an open ear to, to hopefully hear somebody coming. And uh, even on the bike path, when you have bikes wanting to pass and hopefully they give you some warning, but they don't always give you some warning. So make sure that if you're going to listen to music, that it's either an external speaker of some kind. Sometimes the girls have carried a Bluetooth speaker with them, which is kind of neat, um, which it maybe makes the run a little bit awkward, but at least they should be able to hear without having something uh, in both ears. Uh, but tr if you are going to run with earbuds or headphones, make sure that you only have one in. Two is unsafe. You can't hear people coming behind you. You can't hear cars. It distracts you too much, and you need to make sure that you can hear what's going on. So with that, I'll, I'll end, and uh, we'll go over these things at practice, of course, but I just wanted to provide an, another means for you to hear this message and to have some uh, maybe some diagrams. I, I made these diagrams. They're a little bit cheesy, but... I made them to sh sort of show some of these scenarios and hopefully they kind of explain what um, we need to do out there to be safe. So get out and run and be safe and let me know if there's some scenarios that you know of that I haven't covered and maybe I'll either update this or make another video.